Hey game developers and welcome back to the C-Sharp Fundamentals for Unity course. I'm Bilal from Zenfinity.net and in this one we're going to be talking about iteration statements. Now if you want to see the last video where we talked about arrays, make sure to click on the video in the top right. Otherwise, follow along with me here. What I have open is Visual Studio, which we've been using since the first episode, which you can also check out by clicking this card in the top right. Now, in this episode we're going to be focusing on iteration, which is the concept of doing something a certain number of times or uh, maybe a dynamic number of times. So the reason we do this is to avoid repeating ourselves uh, and to make our code like much easier to read and much easier to write. Uh, so one big concept of that is uh, to avoid repeating ourselves. So if we wanted to print something four times, um, we could just use a loop that runs four times rather than literally write out um, printing four times and that's a concept that some people will label as dry or keeping your code dry uh, and what dry stands for is do don't repeat yourself um, and this is just another convention or acronym that programmers like to follow because it, uh, it, it makes doing this sort of thing easier and it makes organizing uh, a convention easier so with all that talk on uh, programming convention, uh, which I think is really important, which is why I like to stress on it, um, why don't we just go ahead and I mean try try out what some of this iteration is? Uh, so in C sharp, there are pretty much four uh, different iterators that you're going to be worrying about, uh, and those are while, do while, for, and for each. Now, uh, why don't we go ahead and quickly talk about what each of those are. So I'll, I'll write down the keywords here in uh, the code just to uh, kind of let you visualize here. So if I write while, um, while is a keyword that we'll use to do something until the statement within parentheses is false. So there's going to be something within these parentheses uh, that is going to evaluate as boolean uh, and whatever that is will um, determine how long the while loop runs. Um, and the difference between a while and a do while is in a while statement um, it'll just do the check before running the code but in a do while statement it will perform the code and then do the while check. And that's for basically any case where you want to uh, do something and then check if it's going to be false afterward. And, you know, I mean, that, that can really be applied to many different scenarios, and it could be avoided altogether. Personally, I never use do whiles in my code, um, but in the future I might. Uh, but just know that the concept is there that you do not have to check before you run the code uh, in the iterator. You can uh, run the code first and then check. Okay, so that's what a do while is and what a while is. Uh, and we'll talk about what a for and a for each are. So a for loop, um, I'll actually avoid writing anything here, but I'll just write a for and a for each. Um, and a for loop will just run for, um, it'll allow you to set a variable uh, and it will allow the code to run until a statement is false, just like a while loop, uh, but it kind of gives you more control. Uh, it lets you set an iterator and it lets you change the way it iterates. Um, and if you don't know what that means, I'll show you in a second. And a for each is a simplified for that can only be used with an array um, or any sort of enumerable uh, object, which if you don't know what that means, basically it's any object that you can iterate over. Um, and that means basically access it in a way similar to this. Uh, okay, so, so that's what all that is. Uh, sorry to... Uh, kind of drag it out here, but why don't we just go ahead and, you know, first check out what a while loop looks like. Okay, so I will begin by setting an integer named i to 0, and I'll write a while loop here. So I'll do while, uh, I don't know, let's say i is less than 5, right? So if we do that, and we'll print, oh, sorry, we will write console.write line. Um, I. Right, okay, and then we'll do, and this is important, uh, I plus plus, which means that I will uh, increase every time this while loop runs. Okay, so, so why don't we go ahead and look at what's going on here, right? 
So as I said, whatever is in here is going to determine how long this while loop runs, right? So i starts as zero at the beginning, and then every time this loop runs, i increases by one. So what this while loop is doing is it gonna, it's gonna keep doing this code until this statement is false. So once i is five, it should stop happening. It, once i hits five here, it'll run through the loop again, it'll see i is five, it's not less than five, so we're just going to skip the rest of this, and then we'll move right here when we're done. Right, so why don't we go ahead and just check out what this looks like, okay? Um, we can actually go ahead and run this and see what that looks like actually, yeah. So I'll go ahead and hit start up here. And I forgot at the at the bottom here, I want to put in um, console.read key. And what this will do is keep the window open until I press the button, right? So I'll hit start here. And then we'll see um, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And so understand why that's happening. Uh, we're checking if it's less than 5. And so once this hits 5, uh, since the print is before, uh, it'll hit 5, and then we won't actually see it become 5. Uh, and then it'll go through here, and then this next part will not print. Uh, and so that's uh, why it stops at 4 there, and we don't see anything more. So the concept is there. Uh, this while loop runs five times, starting with uh, the number zero, and then moving on to the number four. And uh, that's really all there is to it in a while loop. And so you can write anything in here. You could even write while true here, and the loop would become infinite. Uh, and <laughs> you'd have to force quit that application. So I'll hit a key here to close this. And we'll do this the do while style. So let's say do something while i is less than 5. Um, and Oh, and that's because we want this up here, and we'll put a semicolon here. All right, and so that, that's going to do this while this is less than 5. So why don't we go ahead and just hit start to see that this is the same thing. Um, and yeah, basically it'll do the same thing, but before the check happens. And in this case, it doesn't really matter. So just know that that's an option if you feel like at some point in the future that your code would look better uh, if you were to use a do while than if you were to use a while. Uh, and that's really up to you. Uh, you'll determine whether that's the good idea or not. Okay, so let's move on here. And instead of using any whiles, we'll move on to for loops. Okay, so and notice I'm going to delete this as well that i because a for loop lets us have our own special syntax for initializing that iterator. So why don't we go ahead and hit uh, type in 4 here and I'll first begin by writing int i equals 0 and notice that I am creating a whole new variable here that's both declaring and initializing it um, and over here I'll say while i is less than 5 right uh, and then I'll say i plus plus so this is the statement that needs to become false for the for loop to stop. And this is the statement that allows me to change the iterator that I was talking about earlier. And of course, this is where we are allowed to initialize the uh, iterator. Okay, so let's go ahead and in here do basically the same thing, right? So I'll write console.write line i. Oops. Oh, um, and <laughs> sorry about that. And then we'll write over here. Um, actually nothing because again we have this iterator up here. So remember when we had the while loop we had to declare the iterator before we actually had to initialize this up here and we had to uh, do this within the while loop. But with a for loop it lets us kind of conjoin all that together uh, so we have this uh, syntax that's you know kind of recognizable and compact and you're used to it uh, if you've been programming of course. If you're not using it, if you're not used to it yet you will be used to it, so it's a nice tool to have rather than just writing a while loop every single time as it's kind of redundant uh, writing everything separately. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this code and you should see it's exactly the same thing, zero through four, and perfect. So why don't we go ahead and print every number in here um, instead of just, you know, print i one or zero through four, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and instead of say less than five, Let's go ahead and say less than numbers dot 
length. And so what I'm doing here is I'm accessing the length member of numbers, and it is a C sharp property. Um, and if you don't know what that is, just just uh, if you're new if you're new to programming, of course you won't know what it is because it's actually a special kind of C sharp thing. Um, it's basically like a Java getter or setter combined. Uh, so so in this case, what our property is doing is just allowing us to pull a value similar to a variable. Um, and if you don't want to worry about it at all right now, just think of it as a uh, variable, which would then be an attribute which we can access from this uh, numbers object, right? Which is our array of integers. Okay, so we know what the length of this is, which is four. So i is going to run four times, because or this iterator will run four times, sorry, um, and we'll be able to see every number in it. Now instead of just printing i, what I'll do is access the number at index i. So let's say numbers, and we'll use our accessor here, and I'll put i within the brackets, and uh, now we should be able to see 1, 3, 5, 7. So I'll go ahead and hit F5, and we see 1, 3, 5, 7. Perfect, right? So this is uh, a big one. Uh, this is how you go through an array and print everything in its most basic form. Uh, not literally, you can use a while, or you can literally write out, um, you know, <laughs> I can write, I could write out print one, print three, print five, print seven, right? Um, but this is, this is the easiest way and the time that, the, the way that'll save you the most time, uh, in my opinion, uh, unless, unless you factor in a for loop. Uh, and so what a for loop will do is basically let us write this, but make it look more like English, and it'll remove any redundancies that we have with a for loop. And I personally like for each's a lot because I like code that looks similar to English, uh, because I think it's very easy to understand given uh, that you understand English. So why don't we go ahead and switch this to a for each loop. So I'll comment this out so we have it as a reference so you can see the similarity between the two. So alright, for each. And with a for each, what you have to do first is declare a uh, sort of variable here that will be used uh, to store the read-only value of the current index, basically. So let me just go ahead and write it out, and you'll you'll understand it in just a second, right? So let's see, integer number. So for each integer number in numbers, and that was it. That was the Instead of this thing that looks like a jumbled mess right now, uh, we just say for each number in numbers. And before number, we, we do declare the type, um, but the rest of it is just like that. Uh, and so what I can do now is instead of do a weird accessor, which kind of looks gross in comparison, I can just print number. Um, and just look at how much nicer that looks than a for loop. All right. so why don't we go ahead and hit F5 and see how that does the exact same thing, 1357. And I'll go ahead and explain some more about this. Um, the only problem with a for each loop is that if you ever have to edit the array, um, it's going to be a problem because you don't have this index anymore. All you have is this read only value that was pulled from the array. Like if I were to set number equals eight or nine, for example, um, that will just tell me this is a for each iteration variable, which means that um, it's read only basically. It's just pulled from the array, and you cannot modify the array within a for each. Uh, you can only do that if you can access it. Uh, now, this is a C sharp exclusive thing, of course. Uh, in some languages, you can, of course, edit this uh, iterator, and maybe in some languages, it'll edit the array, uh, but that is not the case in C sharp, which is what we're looking at right now. So if you try to do this, uh, your code will not build. Okay, so that is actually all of the uh, iterators that I want to cover. Uh, that's all the ones that you need to worry about. And yeah, that's uh, really it. So again, make sure to look at the playlist for all these videos in the top right. And finally, there is a make your first game course in the top right. It's a card and it's a free sample video from the course. There's also a 90% uh, off coupon in the description there, so go ahead and check that out if you're interested in making your first Unity game. Uh, and with all that said, I will see you in the next episode, uh, and have a good one.